Right, welcome to today's class. We're going to discuss land descriptions and talk about how we describe the real property that we convey during this conveyance process in the real estate world. Now, I know we're online and you guys are watching this online, but when I teach this live, I like to pick on a person because I undoubtedly get a phone call right before the very first day of class and they call me and they're like, hey, I'm at 432 South Emerson, where are you at? And I always say, well, I'm right, right here. And they're like, well, I can't find you. And that's when I asked them, I said, are you at 432 South Emerson in Greenwood? And they go, oh, I'm at 432 South Emerson in Indianapolis. And then I mess with them a little bit because I go, is that Greenwood, Indiana or Greenwood, Ohio? The point being is that the street address is the absolute worst way to identify property, all right, because of all of that confusion. So what happens during this conveyance is that when we actually convey real property, we convey it through a legal description of the property. If you think back a couple chapters ago, I told you that uniqueness, and remember that other word, non-homogeneity, is one of the things that is specific to the real property. And I told you that there were no two properties alike, period. And today, I'm going to prove that to you, all right? So what happened was, way back when we founded the country, they were smart enough to understand that we had to create a method of identifying every piece of real property uniquely so that you would never get that confusion of, well, is it 432 South Emerson and Greenwood or Indianapolis? And if it's Greenwood, is that Greenwood, Ohio or Greenwood, uh, Indiana or Kentucky? So they came up with the legal description. And there are three types of legal descriptions that we actually use to identify real property. The first one there on your notes is actually the easiest one to understand. It is called the meets and bounds method. The meets and bounds method. So let's go over here and see how this works. So the meets and bounds method works in a very simplistic manner where you literally start at this place and we have to start at what's called the point of beginning. It is identified. This is where the whole thing starts from, the POB, all right? That then it goes very simple 200 feet east. As an example, now that's supposed to be a straight line, but remember I'm not an artist. And then it will identify, it'll say 200 feet east to some monument. That monument can be man-made or it could be naturally occurring. Now, if you've ever been out in the road or on a sidewalk and occasionally you see a tag in the middle of the asphalt or the top of a spike driven into the ground. That's actually a monument. That is the basis. That's what we're talking about. So in this particular example, start at the point of beginning and it will identify the point of beginning. It'll say something like 200 feet off the northeast corner of the intersection of Maine and Jones. That is the point of beginning for this legal description. Then it will say 200 feet east to a monument. Thence, 200 feet south. What's going on here? It's not giving me. 200 feet south. to another monument. 
followed by 200 feet west to a monument, thence 200 feet north, and the meets and bounds always ends with the words back to the point of beginning. It has to end with that so that you actually get a complete closed boundary, all right? If you had something where the instructions went like this, that will stop a closing like you wouldn't believe because that's not a totally enclosed. So you, you saw that by literally saying, starting at the point of beginning, going 200 feet east to a monument, followed by 200 feet south to a monument, thence 200 feet west to a monument, thence 200 feet north and back to the point of beginning. That's how it ends, all right? Very simple to do, where it shows the fact that the meets and bounds, meets means a measurement, and bounds means a distance, all right? It literally just describes the circumference of the property. Now, the meets and bounds actually allows for two things that the others do not. The first thing the meets and bounds allows for are angles. It will allow you to go something like 200 feet east, then 45 degrees southwest, where this, you know, is a, an angle. The second thing it allows is this thing called more or less, plus or minus, okay? So let, let's go through another example so I can show you one that is kind of common that we use. Starting at the point of beginning, that's the POB, we go 200 feet east to a monument. Thence at a 45 degree angle for 160 feet more or less to the center thread of the Jones Creek. All right, here's an example where the creek is actually a naturally occurring monument. Now, side note, what kind of body of water is this? You can hit pause and think about it or look at your notes. Well, you should notice right away that it is being treated like a river. So therefore, the owner of this property will have what's called riparian rights. And we know that because it said to the center thread of the creek. We also know what about this river? That it is considered non-navigable because it's going to the center of the river. So this is probably a stream or a creek. All right, so let's go back. Then it's going to say something to the effect, along the center line of the river for 210 feet west. Oh, I want to back up. Why did we say more or less back here? The 160 feet more or less. And the answer is because the center thread of that creek could move, remember? You could get accretion or erosion that makes that river move a little bit. So what they're telling you is it's 160 feet to the river, more or less. One year it might be 159 and 12, uh, 11 inches. One year it may be 161 and a half feet because that river potentially could move. So they use the more or less theory in there. 
All right, so let's go back. So then it follows the center line of the creek, then northwesterly 200 feet, more or less, and back to the point of beginning. Once again, why more or less? Because right here, that creek could move a little bit as well. So it's telling you that if this distance turns out to be, you know, 199.8 feet, it's more or less. So go all the way back to the point of beginning. And here we have that angle. All right. So that is the meets and bounds method, which allows for us to boundary a piece of property by using a distance and a direction. This was the first method that they came up with to create a legal address rather than giving it a street name so there'd be no confusion.